Three years ago, a new racing series was brought on the street and right into the middle of our big cities, the Formula E. But it was not only the idea of putting the series into an outstanding setting, it was the idea to put the vision of new mobility into the mind of people. Well, so far as the series started, some people said racing with electric cars is just like soccer with women. So we're going to figure out what changed in the last years and what results the Formula E brought to the e-mobility today. And I'm so glad that I can talk about that with um, Professor Dr. Peter Gutzmann, Deputy CEO and Chief Technology Officer of Scheffler and with Lucas Di Grassi. I think everyone knows him. He's the reigning champion of the Formula E. Welcome. So, Mr. Gutzmann, do you like women's soccer or why did you join the Formula E from the first second on? I could give an e a very easy answer. I like soccer in general, so why not uh, <laughs> soccer? Uh, w women playing. They, they play very tough and he as a Brazilian also knows that. <laughs> uh, but no, honestly, I think uh, the future of mobility is electrifying the whole powertrain and at the end it will be electric. And uh, if we remember back more than 100 years ago when car industry started, the first engineers, the first car guys, they immediately ended up in competition. So those cars were slower than horses, than horse carriages. So the people were surprised, they were stinking, they were noisy, they were slow, but still they improved. Uh, so we should not compare uh, with current one. That's a new approach, that's a new challenge, and that's the future and, and competition. Engineers, everybody, people like competition. And that's the ideal transport medium, the transport car uh, racing for the future of mobility. I think if they had seen your uh, victory last season, they wouldn't have said that because it was a very emotional moment. So we just have a quick look at this moment to understand what Formula E is about. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just uh, what can I say? An amazing weekend. We did the job yesterday with the race win and pole position, and today we brought it home. The car, a uh, few points enough to seal the title. So, 2017 World Champion of Formula E. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for watching, for cheering for me and for the team. Thanks for the support for all the partners, for Alp, Schaeffler, Audi, all the sponsors, everybody that was with me this year. I really appreciate, and uh, see you next season. So, when you see those pictures, uh, still heart beating? Um, yeah, of course, it was a very emotional uh, uh, win in Montreal. Um, there was a, a lot of effort going on. The championship is extremely difficult. Uh, the, the, the level of competition is extremely high. We have uh, more manufacturers than Formula One involved in Formula E. Uh, we race only in street circuits. There is no margin for error. So to win a championship to, in its third year, after two years being so close and not winning it, uh, it was a, was a great comeback and a uh, uh, hundred kilos less out of my shoulder. So we had a, a very big party, we celebrated a lot. How do you stay tuned? I mean, you said it right before, you were two times so close and then now you finally did it. How do you stay tuned? What's your secret? I, I don't know, just pushing hard, just being focused, try to uh, to optimize every opportunity, every point, every race. Uh, it's very difficult to be consistent in Formula E because of the uh, lack of testing, the, 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 the tracks are all brand new for everyone. So we manage through consistency win the championship. And how important is the team that's beside you and with you? Uh, the team is a great part. So uh, actually three, um, three different players, uh, the team, the operational team, which did a fantastic job. Our technical partners, like Schaffler, we had uh, our own drivetrain, so the motor, inverter, gearbox, all the rear end of the Formula E car is free to develop as you wish, but keeping the same battery and chassis for everyone. So it's actually very close together because you can only develop some parts, but without the know-how and, and the technology understanding and performance of this drivetrain would have no chance. So combining these three points, uh, we managed to, to achieve uh, to beat any other driver and, and, and claim the, the, the title this year. So, Mr. Guzma, you are also part of the team and you were on site when Lucas clinched the title. Tell me a bit about that day. What, what did you feel in that moment when you were standing there and he really succeeded? 
Yeah, I think it was very close to what Lucas felt. Uh, for us, it was a, a kind of adventure getting into that. Uh, we decided to bring Scheffler as a company, a well-known supplier in the automotive industry, into the future. And future, as I mentioned, future of mobility is electric. And uh, to show our competence, uh, like I mentioned, uh, it is important to compete. And that's how we started. And of course, there's, if you do something new, if you do something surprising, if you do something that some people are lo even laughing about, uh, you are a little nervous, is this okay? Uh, so I, I knew right from the beginning that uh, the colleagues around Abt, very, very tough racers, very competent racers. And I, of, of course, knew Lucas, a very encouraged and, uh, and also focused uh, well-known and, and uh, a winning driver. Uh, so the, the, the package was okay. And in the beginning, honestly, uh, we were the weakest point because we were the unknown. Uh, the powertrain, we've never made racing powertrains. We've never made e-motors. Uh, all the others were experienced in this field. So this was uh, in the beginning. And after three, even after uh, three years, second year of our powertrain, first year was with a standard. Being in that position, this is outstanding. And so it was more than one ton that I lost on my shoulders uh, to really be there. And I was really happy. I was not happy for me, a little bit for me as well, of course, but most uh, for the team that we have built it up uh, because it's racing is, is team. Everybody has to do his job and have to contrib contribute. At the end, it's the driver. At the end, it's luck that you need to have. We had bad luck in the second season. We, there was a huge chance to win even there. Uh, but at the end, it, it went down. This time, the luck was on our side. And so it was The luck and the knowledge <laughs> yeah. and the nerves. <laughs> yeah, I have to keep it calm all the time. Yeah, no, he, was a, he did a, an outstanding job. I couldn't have done it. So I was, I was when in this race, I was really not sitting. I was, <laughs> was back standing. and forth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, following the last season, it was quite obvious that you didn't have the fastest car. But what made you nevertheless win this title? <sighs> team, uh, like Professor Gutzmann said, uh, a, a team, team spirit, uh, a team effort. All together, we didn't have the fastest car, uh, but we managed to have the best team. We did the least amount of mistakes on the team side, on my side. Reliability of our drivetrain was impeccable. We, did, uh, we had zero reliability problems the whole season. So putting all together, we had a very, very, very good consistency. We managed to be on the podium seven times, win uh, uh, two races, and uh, yeah, claimed, um, claimed the title in the last one by a good margin, by a 24-point margin, which is the highest one in uh, Formula E history so far. Congratulations at this time again. So um, what is the role of Scheffler in the Formula E? Because it's very important for you, I see, and we feel it <laughs> when you talk about that. Yeah, I think uh, we are a little bit like uh, the competitors, founders of, uh, of something very new. And uh, so this is kind of entrepreneurship. This is kind of something new and we are proud of that. And I, I really believe that Scheffler, with what we have decided, what we have done in the team, uh, has contributed to the success of this series. Of course, like Luca said, this was the combination, but everybody can be proud of what has, had been accomplished. And uh, we are proud and happy that we will continue uh, for the years to come in that combination uh, with addition of, of the Audi colleagues now uh, and hopefully be and show the same success. That's a good point. Audi is joining this, this uh, race too. What, what is the dif difference in the next season, in the upcoming season, with yeah, the, with the role of Audi? Yes. I think in the beginning, as I mentioned, uh, it was up and up and his team who really got into that, who, who really built it, the German team. Uh, we joined later on and when we talked together for the, for the powertrain. And we, right from the beginning, had uh, a nice, very nice and very successful support from Audi. So Audi was watching that, was supporting us, uh, but mainstream was up in Schaeffler. And uh, from now on, uh, Audi takes over the leadership. Uh, we are same relation that we had with up before with Audi now. 
So it's a joint team of Scheffler and Audi for the powertrain, for anything around the powertrain. Uh, the development of the car is now complete responsibility for Audi and for the uh, team uh, during race, for any race-related uh, activity, uh, this is the up team. So the responsibility, the roles are changing. For us, for Scheffler, the role is more or less uh, the same. And uh, I'm very pleased that we could sign with the Audi team another three-year contract. So we will stay. And uh, we laid a very nice, and this is what I'm also proud of, we laid together with um, Lucas, with the up guys, a very nice foundation uh, for, for Audi. But on the other hand, they are challenged now. I think they have to prove that they are as good as we had been. So how do you challenge them? <laughs> um, we're going to keep pushing. Of course, uh, it will be very hard to win a, uh, a title again. Formula E is becoming more strong. All the manufacturers are joining. Uh, but I think we have a good team. I've been with Audi for, since 2012 uh, in LMP1, in the World Endurance Championship, and then Formula E now. So I believe that Audi has the capacity to, to, to build a, a very strong team too. We have the support from Schaffler. We have the support from Abt. So I think I'm, I'm very happy to stay where I am and, uh, and fight for more titles in the next years. So the e-mobility is a very strong topic here on EAA. What did you see today of uh, the new mobility here on the straight fair? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's, it's um, we always said this is not something that happens once or this is a kind of digital move into e-mobility. So that's um, a very important need that we have uh, the ecosystem working. That means we need e uh, cars for, with electric or hybrid drives. Uh, we need to have the, the supply of, of uh, the electric energy and the creation. So this is moving. And now every manufacturer is really getting into that, offering that. People get really into that. Uh, what I'm still see and what we need to establish there, it's coming. Uh, this is technology and emotion. This is uh, normally, uh, you know, the, the new cars are sold and presented by technology, which is rational, more or less. But this technology is combined with emotion. And we see more and more emotion around uh, this kind of very logical and very rational uh, immobility. The, the, there's more and more cars coming, there's, so it's more and more offer. The people are interested. And uh, yeah, we are interested and we are curious to see how this develops. For this show, it's really the most, uh, the, the, the number of e-cars is, is there. Uh, they come, the, 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 the Lucas told about uh, Formula E will be outstanding because this is the series where, what, which ne never, as far as, as far as I know, happened in, in, in motorsports. There are so many OEs are really competing there and, and that's really challenging and they see how important e-mobility and e-mobility and emotion, e-mobility and comp competition in a global approach really is. And so this show is a step in that direction uh, and it will continue. So. Um when you have to convince the people who still say it's just like a soccer game with women, how can you convince them? How can you say, join us, come visit us and see what is Formula E really about? So, I mean, the upcoming season is uh, quite in, in front of us, so. Uh, to be honest, I think this, uh, this analogy is very, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very bad <laughs> because uh, wh what's the problem of women playing football or watching women play football? I actually prefer watching women play football than men play football, myself. But the, the analogy. <laughs> and not, I think a uh, lot of men, but they, yeah, they exactly. don't say it. In yeah, to be honest, <laughs> but uh, to, uh, the, what I uh, what I can say is that um, it is at the very beginning. Um, like Professor Gutzmer said, Formula E has been there only for three years. Formula One, other big series, they've been for 56 years. So they build a heritage. They build a tradition out of it. And Formula E is just at the beginning. And we already have more than twice the manufacturers than Formula One or other series they have. Uh, so that shows the interest of the, of the new technology, of what's going on. On top of that, uh, we can see now the, 
Actually, the fastest production car uh, in the world is electric, uh, zero to 100. Uh, and uh, more and more electric cars are coming, exciting cars are coming, fully electric. Uh, so electric is not, uh, actually the, the, the power density of an electric motor is much higher than any combustion motor. Uh, our Formula E motor weights 20 kilos and has 300 horsepower. So if you imagine that to put four motors like that in a normal car, you can have only 80 kilos with 1,200 horsepower. So for sure, a car like this... <laughs> I would drive with that. <laughs> okay, then, All I, right. then, I, then I will take you in the car that actually we are doing. All right. That has four that's electric motors. That's a promise. Motors. We have it on camera, okay, so we try done. that out. All right. Um, so uh, <laughs> for actually, electric cars, they're very fast. What needs to be evolved, and now it's being pushed forward, is the battery technology. The same as people have on their phone and they say, oh, my battery is finishing. With electric cars, is similar problem. It's the energy storage system. It's not the motor. It's not the lack of noise. Actually, the lack of noise is only something positive. So now I think the, the evolution, how this will, uh, uh, next year with all the investment, solid state batteries, will evolve very quickly. And then pretty much uh, will be just in the long term, will be, will be difficult to see countries allowing for motorsport which is non-electric or as soon as they start banning the sales of combustion engine cars like germany announced like uk announced like china recently announced with a transition phase but in we say in a long term in 50 years probably motorsport will be much more only electric than combustion combustion will be just a classic car racing so we are just at the tip of the iceberg and uh, I'm very proud to be part of this, uh, of this revolution. So we hope that you have a, such a um, su successful season as the last one. And who wants to convince herself or herself from this great series has a chance in Berlin this year. And I wish you all good luck and thank you so much for this interview. Thank you. My, my pleasure. Thank you very much.